So welcome to TRU Talks with me, Chris Hill, as we build up to the second test between the British and Irish Lions and South Africa. And well, this should have been the second episode with our Lions columnist, Lee Mays, discussing the Lions. It isn't. It's actually our first because of rescheduling and other commitments. The superb content that we recorded last week quickly became null and void around selection for the first test. So I'm hoping, hoping this time, Lee, uh, we are going to have a smooth video it's going to go out on time and we can get cracking with the second test so uh cheers again for joining us and i think the one place to start is looking back at the first test i mean what a fight back from the lions and what did you make of it oh it's amazing wasn't it well as you can see uh those that didn't hear my uh and weren't able to hear my predictions i was right on everything uh <laughs> oh he actually was so he's not making that up no so um I mean, what a first test. It was phenomenal, wasn't it? It had everything for me. There was aggression, there was tight calls, there was speed, there was creativity. Um, it was brilliant. It was so, so good. I mean, South Africa never disappoint, do they? They came out the blocks, exactly what we said. Um, they would be really physical. They took that early lead. Um, and then the Lions just slowly but surely got their way back into the game, stuck to the game plan. And as we sort of predicted, the South Africans aren't match fit, um, I wouldn't say. And yeah, but also you've got to give the um, sort of credit to the Lions. But we clawed them back in and then overtook. And I think once we were ahead... Yeah, you you weren't gonna you weren't getting back. Um, the South Africans weren't getting back in the game, were they? No, Lee's absolutely spot on there. Um, everything he did say last week did actually happen. He said Lions were going to win 1-0. He said South Africa were going to come flying out the blocks. He said the Lions were going to come back into it. So Lee was absolutely right with everything he said there. And, and just in terms of that sort of, before we go into a little bit more about the game, Lee, in terms of that mental approach now for the Lions, you know, they've got that win under the belt. How important is it to, to get that first test victory? Because I know, unfortunately, for you guys in 09, you were kind of playing catch-up if you like, if that's a fair assessment. But now they've got that 1-0 lead, it's the balls in their court, and Gatlin's holding all the aces, potentially. Yeah, I think uh, mentally for the Lions, it just takes the pressure off. I mean, being 1-0 up is huge, absolutely huge. And I honestly think, um, no disrespect to the South Africans, but I think we'll, we will be able to, to get away with a 3-0. I'm hoping another giant because this as last time in my uh the, you know the tour that i was lucky enough to be involved in the brutality goes up another level you don't think it can but it will for this second test um and they'll be hurting this time and we were hurting last time um and you know what's coming uh neither side are really gonna have a lot of opportunity to change the way they're gonna set up um i was really surprised with selection but we'll come on to that in a minute um and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a very brutal test. And then hopefully whoever, um, I mean, for the fans, if we were out there, I'd love a, a one all going into a decider. But now I'm at home, I wouldn't mind a, uh, a 2 nil, and then maybe play some of the Sam Simmons, um, you know, uh, Marcus Smiths, um, just to really see what they can do in, in that pressure. But we'll see. Yeah, just on, on those like players on, on the fringes, if you, if you like, Lee, you, you made a good point before we, we pressed record. Like, how, how tough is it for you know, potentially someone like a Sam Simmons, who a lot of people talked about before the series had an unbelievable season, the numbers were ridiculous for Exeter. He missed out with England for God knows what reason, picked by Warren. People were saying he could really add something to the lines, and he hasn't had a, a sniff in the test matches and obviously won't be involved this weekend either. How, how difficult is that? because of the situation surrounding this Lions tour, do you think? Yeah, I, I think for Marcus Smith and Sam Simmons, those types of boys who haven't massively been involved in, in England squads before, I mean, hopefully they are just soaking up the experience. Yes, you are in a bit of a hotel. Yes, it's a bit different. But hopefully just that, that whole playing with such high calibre and quality players will be amazing for them. The, the worry for me is the, the test veterans, the boys that aren't used to not being picked. You know, and there's quite a few in that, in that group. Jamie George, yeah. um, you know, those types of guys that have got 40 or 50 caps. And 
it's legendary among the lions that when you do get into test week you you know the, the way you cope the way you cope with not being selected is you front up on the training field you are there for your teammates but you go out and you have a midweek game to prove the coach is wrong or you go out and you have a couple of beers because you're trying to forge another team that is the you know the extras and you might yeah. get a shot and i think that for me is that you know, that's not been done before without, um, you know, being able to go out for a meal, without being able to. So if you're just in your room and you are just watching the boys with the test shirts, I think that, I mean, it must be so tough for them. I don't know. I'm just making assumptions. Yeah. But I bet it's a, it's a tough place to be right now. Yeah, and you say there that you got, you know, I'm certainly not privileged to that knowledge. And as you say there, you don't know either. But in terms of, I think some of the thoughts might have been going through maybe a map of Vonapola's head at this time last week, obviously not included at all. And then all of a sudden, when Joe's unfortunately gets injured, Mako comes onto the bench and then sort of proves a point possibly to Warren, but also to everybody else who might have written it off over the last seven months with a, a really impressive display for 20 minutes. So I guess that is just the, the fine line on the Lions tour where you could be out one minute and then you, you, you made that impact for 20 minutes and he starts this weekend. Yeah, I mean, all the big calls last week that Warren made and you know whether we give him stick or not but you know van der merver on the wing absolutely outstanding mm. people sort of saying why ali price i mean i think it's very harsh he's not playing this week yeah. but what he put, did a re really good job um you know even elliot dahlia at 13 had a, a, a fantastic um go and then obviously vanapola comes in um everyone's question is is, is scrummaging and he's rock solid yeah, it's, it's one of those things that we'll come on to kind of the selection uh, for this test. I think there's, as you said there, there Lee, I think the scrum half one is, a, is an interesting one and we'll probably dis discuss why we think Warren's gone with that. But just in terms of the last point, kind of on Saturday's test, where did you feel the tide had turned? I mean, a lot of people have centred it around Mario Otoji was just absolutely phenomenal in that second half in particular. But where do you think the, the tide was turned? Because last time we spoke, we were talking about the strength and de depth coming off the bench, but it just seemed to be whatever Warren said at half time, the Lions listened to, and they just seemed to come out a completely different side. Yeah, I think a few of the talisman, um, you know, really stepped up. Uh, Courtney Laws, for me, yeah. was just superb. I mean, all over. Jack Conan, I don't think I have made, seen him make a mistake in the whole of the tournament. Um, and I think Warren said it in the press. Mm. Just a phenomenal um, sort of, you know, individual. He's having such a good test series. Um, so I think they all fronted up, which you, once you stop South Africa... Once you, you know, and, and where we've gone wrong in the past, I think, is trying to overpower them um, and then go away from your game plan. Whereas I felt we matched them and then we started to play um, sort of cleverly and keep the ball and just keep grinding them down. Um, and then, like I say, you've got a bench to die for, haven't you? You can just bring the, those players on and everybody that came on did a fantastic job. And that's probably why he has made changes, because the bench came on and, and made a difference. Yeah, and let's go, go on to those changes then, Lee. A nice little segue there. But uh, obviously, on to Saturday in the second test, those three changes, as we mentioned, Mako uh, is in in the front row and um, Conor Murray replaces Ali Price with Chris Harris in for Elliot Daly. And, and as you touched on a little while ago, it does seem a little bit harsh on Ali Price because I don't think he really put a foot wrong. But can you kind of see potentially the logic of, of playing Conor because of that maybe Lions experience? Yeah, I think that we had such good success with the kicking game. Mm. Um, you know, Van der Merwe on top of um, Colby. Um, you know, he was, you know, he, he was missing, wasn't he, Colby? We didn't really see him at all. Oh, Anthony Watson looked the, the most dangerous runner with ball in hand for me. Um, so, yeah, I think the kicking game is probably even more important. And, and when Conor Murray came on, it, it even shifted up a gear again. So I think that's probably what Warren's looking at. Um, and some of the you know, the decisions around the fringes, but uh, yeah, I thought um, I thought he played really well and kept the tempo high. So it'll be interesting to see if Conor Murray can, from the start, keep the the tempo high like Ali Price did. Yeah, and it's that skill set as you mentioned earlier with Conor that he's able in terms of his kicking game is going to be a massive weapon for for the Lions. And I guess the selection of Chris Harris is to try and 
shut off those narrow channels and, and keep the defence tight. We've seen how impressive he's been, both in attack and defence for Gloucester uh, this season. He's proven it for Scotland and he's obviously rightly there in the lines as well, but he just seems to offer a bit more um, a bit more defensive steel. That's probably a fair way of looking at it. And against kind of Diolande and Am, who were probably targeting Daly a little bit in that first game, that's possibly why Harris is in there. Yeah, Diolande made some really good inroads, didn't he? And if he could have just got his hands free... And that's why I, I still think it was a phenomenal test because mm. if I take my uh, my red coloured glasses off, my tinted uh, Lions glasses, you know, a couple of TMO decisions, and you know, and and it could have been a very different game. You know, I still don't. I thought for for month for Sundays he was offside, but then when Will Greenwood on the press sort of said it was about a foot, where are you in front of his foot? Then I thought, oh my god, we're in trouble here. Yeah. Um, and it went our way. Then uh, Hamish Watson. I mean, how he got away with that. Uh, and then I don't agree that it should have been a card, but the rules are the rules. So I think, did we get the rub of the green in some areas? Oh, yes. Yeah, they aren't far off and they weren't far off causing uh, some some havoc. So every now and again, I do have to put a bit of realism, but it's 1-0. <laughs> and, and you always need a little bit of luck in sport, Lee, uh, if you're going to be successful. So, uh, yeah, no, it is 1-0. And I'm, I'm sure the Springboks will be looking for a reaction this weekend. And, and one thing you wrote in your first column, Lee, which it, I kind of highlighted this morning when I was picking some notes out to have a chat with you, was that you said whoever loses the first test are going to come out and have to change the way they play. And you said it was going to be extremely difficult if that was South Africa. So... What I mean, if, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. What do you think they have to potentially change if they are going to try and get this back to one-one? Because they have that blueprint of playing, don't they? They've gone back to a six-two on the bench, and their way of playing of keeping the scoreboard ticking over obviously just ran out of a little bit of legs in the first test. Yes, and again, would I say it didn't work, or would I say they ran out of steam? I'd mm. say they ran out of steam. Um, but there were a few glaring errors. And, and we know Rassi Erasmus is a very good tactician. But, you know, I think the kicking game on Colby was phenomenal. So I think he'll be looking at that. Um, do you start with someone like Elton Yankees, um, who, who came off the bench because he will be a bit more creative? I honestly don't know. But there's no better tactician, is there? I don't know if you've watched and everybody needs to have a quick watch of the... Uh, of um, uh, following the sun, is it? The, yeah, the, the one on Sky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just to listen to like the move that they used against Wales and the way he thinks. So he, he'll he come out with some changes, um, and but I just don't think they have the ability to say, we're going to keep the ball in hand for 80 minutes and run the Lions ragged, or we're going to you know, put chips over the top. I just can't see it. I think they will just say... We weren't physical enough for 80 minutes. Let's go for longer. Yeah, and I don't know how much you've seen of Jasper Visa Lee this season playing for Leicester. He's, he's got the nod at number eight, the, uh, the young man. He, he seems to um, burst onto the scene at Leicester. He's ferocious in terms of his carrying, and I guess potentially that could give them a little bit more of a dimension. But it is an unknown. It is a gamble by South Africa, but I guess they've got to roll the dice when you want nil down. Yeah, they have to, don't they? And yeah, I've followed him. I think he's been one of the their sort of recruits and fines uh, in the premiership. So, yeah. um, but again, you know, to come out as your first test, your first starting uh, test against that, uh, against the Lions, you know, for him to come off and be the best player, we'll see. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a baptism of fire, isn't it, uh, for, for Jasper? But, we, you know, we're talking a little bit about sort of spring box selection here, Lee, but what kind of, unfortunately, has overshadowed things is the, the social media stuff by Rassi Erasmus and kind of the... War of words with Warren, and you know, you would have worked with Warren, and I think everybody who, who knows Warren is knows he's a very good at mind games. He's been in the been around the block a few times. We've seen it join the Six Nations, Reddy Jones, he's been on the Lions tours with Steve Hansen, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And it just seems that at the moment South Africa are a little bit more focused, or Rassi Erasmus is more focused on the mind game element rather than potentially working on the things that we've just talked about. But probably behind closed doors, they are working up, but Unfortunately, what he's been saying is overshadowing the fact that the Springboks need to get their act together if they're going to pull the series around. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, is it a master stroke or is he truly frustrated? I don't know. I mean, it's such a weird call, isn't it? Would we, if, they, if those um, TMO, all three of those decisions had gone the other way or four even, we'd have been here today going, I can't believe it. <laughs> so someone's going to be moaning. I just think it makes for the, 
the, the game. And I think the coaches are trying to take the pressure off the players, right? Um, and uh, and yeah, and keeping the focus on them so they can uh, they can clown about if they need to. Yeah, you've not the first person to say that, Lee. My colleague Joe, we did a bit of a video for for for, for Friday, and he said exactly the same as you. He thinks it's uh, it could be a little bit of a masterstroke. No one's talking about the players. Rassi's doing all the talking. Whereas I was thinking, oh, it reminded me of Rafa Benitez at Liverpool when he came out with a fax speech around Ferguson and things like that. So there's, there's certainly ways of looking at it, but it's uh, certainly making for an entertaining subplot to all that's going on in terms of the Lions late. Uh, just, a, just a couple more for me before I let you go. Um, you said when we, we first started talking about doing these columns, you've, you've got a bit of a connections over in South Africa. Obviously, Anthony Watson is a, a good pal of yours. Has he been in touch at all? Have you been able to get a gauge of vibe what the squad are going, feeling like going into Saturday at all? Yeah, I think so. It, uh, our chat was more around golf and as he managed to get some golf in, he's turning into a good golfer. And they have had a, I think they've been out once or twice, but it's a, it's winter down in Cape Town, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the mood's good. I mean, when you're 1-0 up in a, in a Lions test series, it's, it's what you want. And, you know, people forget that four years ago, it was a draw in New Zealand and that's yeah. a, that's an anti-climax. You know, it's not a loss. It's not as, you know, traumatising as a loss, but um, it is a, a bit of an anticlimax, so uh, I think they're they're really looking forward to actually being one nil up and in the driving seat. Yeah, in the driving seat, exactly the way of looking at it, Lee. And just finally, for obviously, unfortunately, nobody saw the video that we did last week, but Lee did say if the Lions win one nil, they will go on and win three nil. Are you still sticking by that, Lee, going into Saturday? Yes, definitely. That's my call, and uh, and I think it's going to be physical. It's going to be um, brutal, but it will be three nil. There we go. That is Lee Mays' prediction. And do you know what? I'm getting more confident with what Lee says. Everything's coming true at the moment. So expecting another Lions victory at the weekend. Many thanks to Lee for his time on TOU Talks. Again, more Lions content to come from myself and Joe Harvey over the next couple of days. We've got an exclusive as well with Kelly Brown just discussing the Saracens boys and as what we touched on there with Mako and uh, Maro Atoji performing so well at the weekend as well. But many thanks to Lee uh, for his time. And that has been another episode of TOU Talks. Thank you. Thank you.